Okay, let's continue. And this one is a similar example. And we are using i to visit all the values in the range from 1 to 20. But 20 is excluded, so we really have the values from 1 to 19, right? And then in the body, I, I'm doing what i is now, and then a placeholder, and then I do a dot format i. So I'm plugging the i value into this placeholder. So each one I'm gonna play, I'm gonna uh, print i's value. So uh, this is output, i is now one, that's the first round, and then i is now two, that's the second round. And eventually we have i is now 19, right? So, well, this is the example, but let me go ahead and do something else. Okay, well, uh, you may know that I have a uh, young daughter and she's uh, 15 months now. And say, so I want to, she's able to count from zero. Uh, no, she doesn't know zero. She counts from one. So uh, say we do four. Uh, Lila counting uh, in range. Uh, well, she's able to count from uh, 1 to 10, so 1, 11, right? Because 1 is the start point, and then she's going to stop at 10. She doesn't know how to uh, how to count 11 yet. So, well, that is from 1 to 10. 11 is the start point. 11 is excluded. And then print, say, uh, Lila is counting, comma, uh, Lila counting. Okay, and then I want what, what I really want to show is the else part. So print C, uh, C, I, Lila can count now. Okay, and then remember the rule is after we have finished all the possible runs in this for loop without any issue, and then we will continue running the else. Okay, so let me run this. Okay, this is how I, how we start. Lila is counting one, Lila is counting two, and da, da 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 and eventually we have Lila is counting ten. And after that, we have finished all the possible iterations in the for loop. And since we have finished all the iterations, and there's no issue at all, and then we will move on and execute the else part. And eventually we will see we will, we will run this line and we will print C, Lila can count now. Okay, so this is the part, uh, this is the part of the else. Usually people don't want to use that, use the else part in the for loop and a lot of the experienced programmers or even some coding style guidelines, they encourage people to avoid using the else part after the for loop because this syntax can be confusing. and. Well, the reason is if you see the else and usually you are expecting a if up, right? But in Python, we have this weird syntax and then we, are, we can also have the else after a for loop. So, well, the argument is this is not really a good practice to do, but you should be able to understand the syntax like this, okay? And the other part I want to talk about is, well, you, we are doing for i in the range from 1 to 20. And that variable i is called the loop control variable. We are just using that variable to visit all the members of a range, right? So, well, this, this uh, loop control variable is meaningless after the iteration. It can, it's, we, usually, we usually only use them inside the iterations. So, well, we just give them a kind of meaningless short variable name in most of the cases. And usually we use i or j or x or y, but you can use something else. For example, here, I'm using the Lila counting as the control variable. And I, this is a kind of a meaningful control variable because that is the number Lila, my daughter, is counting, right? Uh, let me move on. And this is a hard example. Well, and say, how do we visit the characters in a string? And we have a really long string, and then I want to visit all the characters one by one. The first character is a nine, and what is the second character? The second character is a comma, right? So, well, if you see that, even, even we call that a number, but it is really a string. 
a string with numbers and also commas, right? So let me uh, show you a, a smart example. Say, uh, I'm going to do another separator here. And then I'm defining my string called Python, OK? This is a, a string with six characters. And if you want to count the indexes, what is the index of the first letter P? So how do we get the first letter P? We know we count from zero, right? OK, so if you do my string, and then if you want to get to the first character, how do you do that? You add a zero here, right? So if you want to do print, and then uh, my string with the index at zero, and then you will get the letter P, OK? And then index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four, index five. OK, so if I want to uh, visit all the values from zero to five, and how do I do that? So I want to do for i in the range of six. And then for each one, I'm going to do a print of my string with the i as the index. So how about that? So we know p is index 0, and then index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, index 5. So 0 to 5 are the valid indexes in the string Python. So to visit all the possible indexes, I created a range of 6. And then for each round, I'm going to use i as the index to visit and print a particular character in that string. OK, so let me run this code and show you what is going to happen. So P Y T H O N. So to that, it works. So that is index 0, index 1, index 2, 3, 4, and 5. OK, so what is this 6? The 6 is exactly the length of this string, right? This string has the length to be 6, and then after knowing there are a total of six characters and then the valid indexes will be from zero to five okay so let me ask you this question so if i change this string to python r okay and then how do i change this code to still visit all the possible characters and the answer is we have a string with seven character now so i have to change this to seven okay so if you don't believe me let me run this code and then you have the python ah <laughs> okay well the point i'm trying to make is this number is exactly the length of the string right so how about i write this way how do you like that? Well, and then, well, I'm, it doesn't really matter how many characters are there. As long as I'm creating a range, of, and that range is the length of the string, I will be able to visit all the characters one by one in this string. So let me do something even harder. Python is a difficult. Uh, programming language okay so I don't know how many characters are there it doesn't matter as long as I'm doing a range of the length of my string and then I should be able to print all the characters one by one let me try that and then Python uh, Python is a difficult programming language right so we stop at the right place okay so this is the trick i want to show you well as long as you are doing the range of the length of the string and then you will be able to use i to visit all the indexes one by one and then if you want to print all the characters one by one you can do that and this is coming back here 
we do have a super we do have a super complicated string with a numbers and commas it doesn't matter as long as we do the for i in the range of zero to the length of the number and then we can print all the characters one by one okay so let's do we are going to do something harder but we, have, we want to talk about this first well this is a handy way to check whether a string is a substring of another one. So, well, and then we want to use the in operator. And to use the in operator, that is a string one in string two. And then Python will give you either a true or a false, okay? So if you want to check Python in Python rocks, and then you will get a true because Python is indeed a substring of the other string. But if you want to capitalize the P, so now the second example, the P is capitalized and then uh, uppercase P, Python, is not part of, the, uh, part of the substring, so you will get a false. When you are applying the in operator, remember you are going to get either a true or a false, and you are going to get a boolean guaranteed. Okay, so now we come back to this string, and this this string, and this is the string with numbers and commas. And our goal is we want to remove all the commas. We only want to keep the numbers. Okay, and how do we do that? So in this in this case, we want to have this string cleaned. Okay, and I created a variable called clean number, and that is the empty string for now. And then I'm using the same trick, and I'm going to visit all the, uh, uh, all the characters one by one, and I'm using the i as the index. Well, and remember, what are the valid characters we want to keep? And they are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 9, right? So I decided I want to create a string like this. So 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm calling that 0 to 9 string, okay? That is string from 0 to 9. And then, if the current character is a substring of my 0 to 9 string, what does this mean? Let me ask you again, okay? So if I'm seeing the current character, number with the index i, is a substring of the 0 to 9 string, what does that mean? This means the current character I'm visiting is a number. It's not a comma. Is that correct? Right? Because say I'm visiting 9, and that's, this is the character I'm visiting. And is 9 a member of the 0 to 9 string? Yes, because it's here. So I'm having a true. Having a true means this is a character I want to keep. And otherwise, if I'm visiting a comma, what am I going to do? This is a comma, and then this comma is not part of the 0 to 9 string. So this means this is a character I want to throw away, right? So I'm using this if statement to check whether this is the character I want to keep or this is a character I want to throw away. And if that is indeed a character I want to keep, and then what am I going to do? I'm going to print the number with the index i. So I'm printing the current, I'm printing the current character, and then and equals a empty string. So well, I'm going to explain that to you later. And then well, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to append the current character to the clean number. So I'm adding the current number as the current character I'm visiting to the clean number. So eventually, after finishing everything, and then I will have a cleaned number with all digits, and then all the commas will be thrown away, right? And then let me explain this part. So and equals a empty string. What does this mean? Okay, so I'm going to write even more code. Say so if I want to print hello, and then I want to print word and then if you run this code and let me ask you are the words hello and word appear in one line or two lines oops 
okay they are going to be in two lines and why because by default after each print python will add a line break so say if i want to I, I print something but i don't want the line break and how do i do that and then i do the line the end equals empty string saying after printing this one you don't you don't add a line break you just add a empty string well this is just to say okay when you finish printing this line don't add a line break and using this character or this string at the end of the line so python will print hello and then python will add this empty string instead of a line break and then you will print the word so in this case you print hello and then there's no line break and the next thing you will print the word so hello and word will be in the same line let me try that the hello and word will be in one line and you may say okay after printing hello and i don't want to have a line break but i do want to have a space how do i do that you add a space here this means after printing hello and then at the end python go ahead and add a space so let me run this again okay you have the hello and word well, and this is super handy, especially if you want to print something and you don't want to have a line break enforced. And then you can you can uh, make use of this trick. Okay. Well, I think this video is long enough, and I will see you in the next video.